back to my masquerade. My name's Para, your host, and today we're going to be playing Stillwater. Now, I've been eyeing up this game since the moment it first came to itch.io, itch or the first time I ever saw it on the site, but decided not to play it because by the time I was going to play it, then it was already off trending and I was like, nah. But it just, like, I saw it again today and I decided why not record this one because it just, it looks so interesting. And there's no way I could not. I think it's about like a detective or something. So let's start. Still water. This is a work of fiction. The resemblance to any real people is purely coincidental. This game contains descriptions of horror, mature themes, violence, and strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh dear. Oh, you hear that, kids? Uh, don't uh, don't watch this if you if you if you don't like any of those things. I'm sorry, but I can't stay here anymore, Nina. I feel like I'm going crazy. Calm down. If we can just talk it out. So many strange things keep happening after another. Every day there's a damn dripping sound. I thought it was just something leaking at first, but... I check every faucet, every ceiling, every pipeline, and still... Still, I hear it everywhere, constantly echoing in my ears. Oh, but the water. I find random pools of water just appear out of nowhere, just like dripping. But it's at night. It's at night when it comes. I don't know if it's my paranoia, but I swear I could hear footsteps walking down the hallways, walking on pools of water. They walk, and they walk, upstairs and downstairs, and upstairs and downstairs, and upstairs and downstairs, and... Now that gonna go on for a while. And it goes on, and on, and on, and on like that, but somehow, it does come to an end. And it ends in front of your grandfather's room. I know that this is a lot. But you have to believe me. No matter how many times I clean, it just won't end. I can't stay here any longer. I'm sorry, Nina. It's okay. I understand. Thank you for taking care of my grandfather. Nina, please listen to me. I don't know what's happening around here, but the woman on the phone cautiously looks around before speaking again in a hushed tone. Oh, <gasps> look at the shadow. You guys see that? You guys see the shadow? It's a demon, I tell you that. Something terrible is lurking through this house. I don't know what it is, but please, as soon as you get back, take your grandfather and just leave this place. I can't just leave. That's my home. Please, Nina, this place, it's, it's not safe. I don't know what you saw, but I can't just leave things like this. Are you sure? I mean, she's staring right at it. This is my home. It's my home. just hung up on her dinner 7 a.m. or diner a middle foggy morning there sits a man by the corner of a booth he drinks black coffee and depending on his mood occasionally orders a donut and today it was just black coffee oh goodness gracious no kidding you look like you just got beat two times till Sunday Ugh. I swear I've never seen that amount of paperwork in my life a freaking mountain worth of it you're a valuable member of our team Hugo my foot I'm sorry to believe that I'm bamboozled into joining their agency. <sighs> Hugo Laurent, age 30, takes a good look at his cup of joe and chugs it all in one sitting. He then continues to grumble to himself about last night's grueling work at the office. I really need a different job. As he contemplates his poor life choices, he looks out towards the early mist. There was something inherently terrifying about the fog to him, how it engulfs everything and nothing. Even if it disappears, it will always leave behind traces, proof of it remaining. Even in a quaint little town like this, I can't even run from my fate, I guess. Hugo finally stares at the compiled newspaper clippings he put together. I'm sorry, this, mu this music is beautiful. I have to put it up. Ugh, this music, man, it reminds me of, like every anime I've ever watched. Just that case closed, but more calm. Hugo finally stares at the compiled newspaper clippings he put together. Some of them from recent events, but mainly all were past headlines of missing person cases. No matter how many times I see this, it's still just as hard to look at. Fixating case after case, he can't help but remind himself that there is a reason for all of this. An all too personal reason. Seeing strange things come with a price. In the end, I'm the one doing this to myself. Sounds rough, may I join you? An annoying, familiar voice interrupts his train of thought. He slowly looks up to see the one responsible, although reluctantly. Uh oh. Oh! My boy! Ah, oh, look at all these sexy boys. Hugo, if you just stood up a little straighter, look how sexy you'd look. Hmm? Hmm? 
what straightness does to a man. Or he might already be standing up straight, but his jacket's just really puffed up in the back, so it makes it look like he's slouching. I wouldn't know. Good morning, Hugo. Hugo scowls and turns away from him. He then gathers the files and shoves it back into the binder. Meanwhile, the tall man takes this as an initiative and sits at the opposite end of the booth. He greets the waitress passing by and orders himself the hefty body breakfast special with an extra plate. As usual, the waitress is happy to oblige and goes back to the counter to relay his order. The man then looks back at Hugo. He sees the empty cup and the now jumbling newspaper kiplings, all while Hugo is trying to ignore him. You really should eat something with that black coffee. Not ordering any donuts today? I'm fine, Noah. I'm just not in the mood, okay? Not even a little. There's a momentary silence between them before Noah disturbs it once more. Well, too bad for you. I ordered a big breakfast for the two of us. T wow. As if the world could grace Noah with an even more perfect punchline, the food arrives. Why the hell did you order for the two of us? Just eat what you want to eat, don't worry about me. Wow, this looks so delicious, right Hugo? Are you even listening to me? Come on, we both know that if you don't eat now, who knows when or will, and I'm not about to let you faint again. So, open wide. Oh, wow. I think they may be flirting, guys. Look, he's even taking out for dinner. It's the, sly the slyest dinner move I've ever seen. Oh, hey, how you doing? Totally wasn't, didn't know you were here every morning. Oh, wait, I already ordered you two food. It <laughs> must be a date. Noah de Leon, age 27, a natural born charmer is just as equally persuasive as he is threatening. He will kill you. With a pensive look, Hugo finally gives in and eats the generous spoonful without further complaints. It's good. Right? Good food will always help cheer you up. Damn him, I got swept away again. Oh, by the way, the chief will be out for a business trip. She mentioned it would be a couple of days. When did she tell you this? I didn't hear anything about it. Mmm, yesterday, I think? Yesterday? She told me to sort out the cabinets yesterday. She didn't mention anything about a business trip. Uh, I guess it was a pretty summoned one. Well, I mean, she did tell me to tell you. And lucky me, I know where you go every morning. You know what? I'm not surprised anymore. Well, what do you want to do? We technically have the day off. I'm gonna head back to the office. There's a couple of boxes I didn't get a chance to sort out. In that case, I'll come with you. Why? You could just rest for the day. And pass up this opportunity to get you know you better. Quit it. After their enlightening banter, the two of them finish their breakfast, pay for their meals, and head to Hugo's car. Oh, he's, they're so cute! I kind of ship them, but not, not, wet, not yet. As Noah opens the door to the passenger seat, he notices a bloodhound sleeping inside. Oh, hello, little doggy. The big dog stirs at the sound of the car opening and lazily stares at Noah. I'm sorry, big guy. Then he closes the door while trying not to make too much noise to disturb its occupant. Colby. At the sound of his name, his heavy-lidded eyes slowly peek to see who calls for him. It is his one and only partner, his human. As if finally realizing who he is or where he is, the old bloodhound stirs from his sleep, pounces at Hugo, and proceeds to wag his tail uncontrollably. Bark! Good morning again, Colby. You had a nice nap? Colby. Eight years old. Hugo's most faithful and loving partner in crime has the biggest tendency to just sleep all over the place. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're so cute. Look at how happy Hugo is. Oh my gosh. Colby is like his dude, you know? Noah, who is witnessing all of this from the back seat, chokes to himself. He is amazed and slightly defeated at Hugo's sudden surge of energy. Look how happy he is. Oh, he's a good boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It doesn't matter how many times I try, when it comes to boosting up his mood, no one can beat Colby. Yeah, sorry, Noah. Agency, 7.50 a.m. Okay, so 50 minutes have already passed. The three headed back to the office, the space just the same as Hugo left it. A decent, organized mess. To his credit, for the amount of boxes he painstakingly went through, he believes he did a fair job. I'll bet could have been better. Wow, you really outdid yourself, Hugo. It looks... Less crowded. Ah, shut it, will you? I said I was gonna get to it. Thanks, boy. Oh, he's so in love with that doggy. Before Hugo could continue to give deserved head pats, he notices someone. A woman standing timidly, peering outside from the storefront. The woman appears to be a bit frantic, disheveled and wearing ill-fitted clothes. She appears to be distressed about something. When she finally makes eye contact with Hugo, she immediately rushes in. 
I, I, I'm so sorry. I know the, the, the close sign is up, but I saw you come in and I... Are you alright, miss? I need your help! My grandfather, he... Before she could continue, Noah swiftly intervenes. It's okay. We'll hear what you have to say. So please, why don't you take a seat? Noah gestures to one of the empty chairs. The poor woman hesitates for a moment before heavenly sighing in relief. She then walks toward the corner of the room and sits on the sofa. Can you start off by telling us your name? I'm sorry for earlier. My name is Nina Mortimer. I need help watching over my grandfather tonight. Watching over your grandfather? Yes. I'm sorry, Miss Mortimer, but I don't quite understand. Is he in danger? I'm afraid he is. Miss Mortimer, if that's the case, wouldn't contact the police be better? No! I've tried requesting their help, and they all gave me the same answer. There was nothing they can do about it. If only I knew who Lewis was. Lewis? Nina fidgets at the name. She looks at the side before reaching out from her bag for an antique letter. My grandfather, he received the cryptic message the other day. It didn't come with an address or the name of the sender. However, the only thing I did pick up was that name. She hands over the letter. Hugo notices her hand slightly shaking. Whatever lies in this note must have shaken her this badly. Delicately, Hugo removes the content of the envelope and unfolds it. At first glance, it seems like any normal written message. A person named Louis asking the other, Henry, to come meet him by the lake at midnight, needing to share something important with him. However, what eerily striking about this letter is not the message itself. Rather, at the bottom of the page, a sentence far more disturbing is written. I am coming for you, Henry. Were there any other letters like this? Y yes, a few of them. I thought it was a sick joke at first, but this one... This one was different. Up until now, I've never heard of anyone by that name. Not a relative or a family friend. But they clearly know who my grandfather is. If I don't do something about this, I'll lose... I'll lose him too. Just by uttering the words alone, Nina breaks down. Hiding away her tear-streaked face, she begins to quietly sob to herself. As an act of comfort, Colby sits closely to Nina while Noah fetches tissues for her. Higo, on the other hand, is puzzled. This very well could have been a prank, but she seems certain. Certain that whoever or whatever this Lewis person is, they're coming. Do you want some more tissues? I'll do it. I'll take on your case. For a moment, silence fills the room. Only stares are directed at Hugo until Nina finally stands up and walks toward him. You'll... take it? Hugo simply nods. Thank you, thank you. You don't know how much this means to me. We're glad to help, miss. Nina. Nina is fine. Well, Nina, we'll do our best. Nina slightly smiles at Hugo before reaching into her bag once more and taking out a note. Ah, 4970 Church Street. Ooh, this is my address. I'll be sure to greet you once when you get there, detective. I don't think that's a sentence, but I'm going to ignore that. She politely bowed once more before heading to her car and drives back home. Once out of sight, Hugo turns to look at his cluttered desk. Still messy, but presentable. I guess I'll have to sort these out later. Again. Ah, uh, are we taking our boy with us? Car, 5.30pm. From the ongoing downpour to the quiet hums of the car, they sit in silence. Still miles off from their destination, Hugo constantly checks the rear view mirror. Noah, who usually chats his ear off by now, sits completely still. He looks onto the passing streetlights, reserved and distant. Hey, you're a lot quieter than usual, what's wrong? Ha! <laughs> this is a surprise. Have you been looking at me, Hugo? No, you idiot! You usually just talk a lot, that's all. So, do you miss me talking a lot? Just say it. I didn't want to offend Nina earlier, so I kept quiet until she finished. But it's her last name that caught me off guard. Have you heard about the Mortimers? They're a pretty distinguished family. Well, they used to be. What do you mean? They've been struck with so many tragedies that over time people begin to believe they were cursed or something. Every other year I would see a headline on the local news about one of the family members' deaths. And you know what's strange? All of them have been labeled as accidents. No foul play, no nothing. Just another unfortunate event for the family. Maybe. I understand why she wouldn't go to the police. She probably thought they perceive her as paranoid or hysterical. Or worse, crazy. I can imagine all of this for Nina. And most of all, who knows what we'll find there. Is that why you decided to come with me? Well, partially. I'm more worried about you, though. 
Think of it this way. I'm the appointed driver. When you decide to do some pretty reckless shit, I'll be there to drive you to the local hospital. Ugh. Besides, two are better than one. Exactly. I was fine with Colby coming with me. Yeah, Ahanoa the dog, obviously. Well, have you heard that three is better than two? Ugh. He's like, you know that four is better than three? Mortimer State. Six o'clock p.m. Passing through countless dirt roads and steep cliffs, the estate reveals itself beyond the evergreen. Nested and tucked away from prying eyes, it stands tall, looming from a distance. Hugo and Noah could only gaze at the sheer scale of the manor as they parked adjacent to Gina's car. To Nina's car, my bad. Wow. And to think she came all the way just to request us. It took us more than a couple of hours to get here. Maybe she really didn't have a choice. What do you mean? Come on, she's waiting for us. Immediately after exiting the driver's seat, a sudden sharp pain wells heavy on Hugo's chest. Grasping tightly at his coat, he begins to gasp for air. His gaze hazes as he leans close to the car. Uh-oh. Like a fish drawn out from sea, he desperately heaves. But this ache he harbors pales in comparison to the pain far more excruciating. Is it the house? No. Something far more sinister. He feels it. Something is watching him. A piercing gaze fixed on him, like leering at a bug and waiting to strike. I'll never forgive you. What the hell? Damn it already! I need to hurry or else- Hey, are you alright? Noah calls out to him, snapping him out of his fixated trance. Colby nudges his head against Hugo, whining with concern over his partner's well-being. Did you hear that just now? Hear what? That voice! It was so close to my ear, I... Is everything alright? Oh. oh, it's fine. Don't mind me. Just a bit winded from the trip, that's all. I'll be happy to make you coffee at the very least. If it's no trouble. No, not at all. It's the least I can do. Once again, this subtle uneasiness from Nina surfaces. But before Hugo could get the chance to look further into it, she walks off toward the front porch without saying another word. Are you sure you're alright? You sound like you were choking earlier. I said I'm fine. Besides, we're already here. We can't back out now. Listen to me, I think you should- Noah abruptly cuts his lecture short as he notices Nina stopping by the front door. She stands there silently, as if contemplating something. Cont contemplating something, so sorry. I know this may sound rude, but I didn't get a chance to know your names. Well, you were pretty out of it when you walked in. I'm really sorry about that. No worries. This is Detective Hugo Laurent. His assistant, Colby. And I'm his second assistant, Noah de Leon. Ha! <laughs> he seems so surreal, just like a cartoon. Ha <laughs> uh, ha! It's because it is. Nina meekly smiles before turning away from them. I haven't been quite honest with you, Detective Laurent. Uh-oh. Have you been lying to me? Just like before, as of carefully choosing her next words, she decides that in this situation, words are not enough. You'll see for yourselves what I mean. And with that, Nina enters the house, leaving the three to follow behind. Hugo was about to enter to the foyer when he feels a tug on his arm. Don't forget what I told you. If something happens, let me know right away. You'll be the first to know. And with that, Noah releases his grip on Hugo. It proceeds to head in, not knowing what awaits them beyond the door. Greeted with a brightly lit hallway, Hugo notes that the interior is just as grand. Adorned with floral accents and antique paintings, it excludes an eglant charm found only in a replacent uh, re house such as this. However, Hugo notices something even more distinct than the splendor. The house is much more terrifying inside than out. Please, come this way. I don't trust Nina. Nina could be the demon for all I know. Bracing themselves, they enter the dimly lit drawing room. At first glance, Hugo could not discern the silhouettes situated at the far corner. However, on closer inspection, he now understands the reason for all of Nina's unsettling vagueness. Grandfather, we have guests. Gr Grandfather? Grandfather? Nina, that man looks younger than you. What the hell's happening? 
He's the sexiest man I've ever seen. Look at this Bruno mother flipper. <laughs> no, but seriously. Grandfather. Sitting on the armchair is a young man. He is dressed in a white collared down dress shirt, tucked in with black sacks and black penny loafers. Staring only at the window, the young man sits there, dazed with little acknowledgement of the people around him. Still, motionless, like a doll. Grandpa, these are the people I spoke of. This is Detective Laurent and his two assistants, Colby and Noah. They're going to help us. Even after introducing them to the head of the Mortimer estate, Hugo and Noah could not help but feel unnerved. This man before them is supposed to be frail and older than any of them. And yet here he remains, forever unchanging, forever young. They've come a long way, so I'll be making some coffee. Would you also like some, Grandpa? The young man still does not reply back, never glancing at Nina or anyone else in the room, only fixed on the rain. I'll be sure to make a cup for you too. She then timidly gestures to Hugo and Noah back, back to the fjord. Bearing more questions, the two follow Nina outside. But before they leave the drawing room, Hugo takes one last look at the young man. There is an all too familiar air about Henry Mortimer. His eyes. They're similar to his own. Whatever he must be longing for, Hugo knows it will not end well. Nina. That man. Yes, he's my grandfather. The one I asked you all to watch over. I, I know this is hard to believe, but... Nina draws something out of her pocket. It's an antique picture of a young man with slicked back hair wearing a luxurious suit. He appears to be posed and refined. A complete contrast to the current Henry Mortimer. This isn't much to go by, but I swear he is the same person. Then why does he look so... so young? It happened a few nights ago. I was on my way to get a cup of tea when I heard a loud thud coming from my grandfather's room. I was worried that something fell over, so I went to go check. When I opened the door, I found him collapsed on the ground. I rushed to help him, but when I did, he looked so different. So many things were rushing to my head, and yet he felt so familiar to me. He wore the same clothes that my grandpa wore that night. And his face, I, I recognized his face. He just looked younger. That was also the same night I found that letter. It was next to him, already opened. I'm sorry again for all of this. No matter who I went to, they either said something was wrong with me or my family. With everything going on, maybe they're right. The pools of water, the dripping sounds, the letter, and now this? Maybe my family is really cursed. They're not. Curses aren't real. Detective? Th look, at, look at that face. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I think we easily get too involved in believing that sort of thing exists. In reality, the ones who fixate on it feeds off of it. Rumors, doubts, lies, all of those things are what they want to become real. Deep-rooted emotions like that can't possibly be healed or fixed right away. But like a curse, those emotions drag other people down with them. Personally, I think you were caught up on all this. But I assure you, we'll see this through. For you and your grandfather. Thank you. Good. Now, our first priority is to find out more about Lewis. Nina, the letter you showed us back at the agency, do you have it with you? Ah, uh, yes, it's here. Do you mind if I fire it for a bit? I'll be sure to give it back. Of course. I mean, I don't think she wants it back, but okay. I'll check upstairs. Noah, you and Colby check the ground floor. Got it. Before they leave to do their own investigations, Hugo grabs a hold of Noah's shoulder. He leans in, close enough for Nina not to hear. Keep a close eye on Mr. Mortimer and Nina. Especially Nina. Right? I don't trust Nina. What the hell's going on? Okay. I'm counting on you. You too, boy. That was a little cutie. And with that, Hugo heads upstairs, starting his investigation. Okay, let's end it here. Mortimer State, 11.30pm. Let's end it right here. Uh, it's almost already been 30 minutes, and I don't really want to over 
overwork my time. You know, I want to save some for the next episode, which will totally finish it because I don't want to like get really far and then stop and then do the next episode and then realize that I only had like, what, 11 minutes left? No, no, I want to space it out perfectly this time. So let's end here. This is a good stopping point. We're stopping right where we're going to get to the investigation. I totally believe it's Nina. There's something suspicious about her. And I mean, does nobody else notice the grandfather's eyes glowing green? Must just be, maybe Hugo probably notices. He looks like a, he looks someone who can like sense supernatural things, right? He can probably sense it. He's probably like really good at it. Uh, so far, this is a blast. I am loving this. I, I knew this was going to be good. I just, I fell in love with the art style. Gosh, okay, don't hate me on this, but I really ship Hugo and, oh no, what's his name? Uh, I can't remember anymore. How did this happen? I can't remember his name, but I, I really ship him with blue hair, dude. Gosh, I'm so bad at names. Like, I look away for one second and it's gone. It's Hugo and... It, it, it's gone. Okay, well, I had a blast so far. I mean, this game, it's been a while since I really enjoyed playing a visual game. I mean, has it been a while since we read one? Not really. I mean, wasn't Trick or Treat sort of like a visual game? This one's 100% just a visual game. I have no clue if it's gonna be like option choices. I actually have to check if I'm gonna get different endings even. But uh, so far I'm enjoying this and I hope that you guys are enjoying this too. So thank you everyone for coming to today's Masquerade. Um, I upload every Friday, so if you wanna see more gameplay videos then don't forget to subscribe to get an invitation to my next Masquerade and click the like button to get this video to other people and to support me, your host, Para. Bye!